Tim O'Reilly, the founder of O'Reilly Media, and really the one who popularized the terms open source and Web 2.0, stated that in today's world, there are unique opportunities to rethink how government agencies perform their missions and serve citizens. And what better way to serve citizens than to work on a problem that affects us all every day from a personal, professional, and environmental level? So what problem am I talking about? It's this, gridlock, traffic congestion. The DOT secretary recently said in a town hall meeting that traffic congestion is one of the biggest problems facing American cities today. It's something we experience almost every day, whether you're in Atlanta, Los Angeles, New York, or Nashville. And it's not just happening in large cities. It's happening in cities of all sizes all over the country. So let's look at what it's doing to us from first a personal level. Founder of Basecamp, Jason Fried, wrote a book called Remote. And in that book, he cites research that suggests these type of commutes are associated with increased risk of obesity, insomnia, stress, neck and back pain, uh, high blood pressure, depression, uh, the list goes on and on. So clearly it's not good for us at a personal level. What about a professional level? What's it doing to our pro productivity? Well, let's say you spend an average of one and a half hours a day commuting. We'll do the math. That comes up to seven and a half hours per week, 300 to 400 hours per year, or the equivalent of 50 days, or five weeks. Just stop and think about what you can do with an extra five weeks. So it's not good for us at a professional level. What about from an environmental level? What's it doing to our planet? Well, it's making our cities look like this. And this. And in worst case scenarios, we see images like this from around the world. So it's not good for our planet either. Now as we know, there's lots of talk at an international level on reducing carbon emissions and so on. But the question is, what can we do closer to home? What can we do as data providers, innovation officers, transportation engineers, planners and developers? What can we do? Well, what I'm going to show you is with the right data and tools, we can begin to make change right here in our own backyard. We can look at things like trip reduction strategies, sustainable development, affordable housing, so people can live where they work. And that brings me to two maps. So what is two maps? Two maps is a solution that includes the only spatial algorithm built for assigning every parcel in America a categorical score to formulate overlay zones that identify optimal development areas that increase affordable housing while decreasing traffic flows. So where do we start? We start with the data. So we've got parcel boundaries from all over the country. Uh, they're coded in different ways. They've got we've got destination parcels that are made up of retail, services, and amenities. You also have candidate parcels. Those are mixed use, multifamily, warehouse, industrial. Candidates for redevelopment. In addition to that, we've got bus stop data, jobs data, roads data, and so on. So what do we do with all that data? Well, we start analyzing it. We first assign walk ratings to each parcel. So we look at the walkability to these destination parcels. And it's pretty obvious when you put a score on these, which ones are your high walkability parcels. It's the pink and the red. Same thing with the transit scores. So when you look at the transibility of these parcels, the availability to get to bus stops, to get to transit locations, that can get you to those destination parcels in your high transit areas are your red and your orange. So what happens then is when we take your high walk, your high transit, 
and overlay that with your candidate parcels, what do you get? You get this. You get what we call the climate change overlay zone, which is a subset of all these parcels that are the perfect candidates based on this algorithm for being redeveloped or repurposed. Once you have this group of parcels now, you can begin to even further look into or research which ones are going to be the first to be redeveloped. You can look at things like the lot size, the building size, the number of units in the building, the age of the building. So which ones are perfect candidates to start repurposing? So what are the benefits of doing something like this? Well, the first one is it decreases traffic congestion. And as we know from earlier, that comes with its own host of benefits. Uh, you also reduce a community's carbon footprint, helping to reverse climate change. You increase the availability of affordable housing, again, allowing people to live where they work. There's an economic impact that as buildings can be repurposed from vacant land, industrial, and warehouse, that investment in those properties in developing them will create jobs and revenues from rents. You also add housing inventory, which expedites compliance with new HUD Fair Housing Act guidelines. So a whole host of benefits. And I'm going to end the way I began with a quote from Tim O'Reilly, which is, work on stuff that matters. This clearly matters. So let's get to work on it.